Hi, this is Jeff Blauett, Technical Agronomist for Cooperative Farmers Elevator. And on this week's Field Friday segment, I wanted to maybe take another look, uh, maybe a little further into something we talked about last week. Um, we talked about the fungicide applications and how that was looking on corn. We could see the corn that wasn't treated was definitely uh, not as healthy. I wanted to take that a step further since most of the fields did not get fungicide treatment. And driving around the country this last week or two, um, something we've probably all noticed, this corn has really died in a hurry. The green has disappeared really rapidly and probably a little faster than we would like to see. Uh, I think what we're seeing is this really rapid death causing some issues in the field. So I thought we'd you know, maybe point some of that out and make you aware uh, something you may want to take a look at in your own fields to maybe avoid as many problems as we can. Uh, you can see here, um, this is a field that's already got some stalks that are broken over by itself. Uh, these were broken over already when I got out here. Um, you can see, you know, this corn has got, you know, it's finished, the ears are drooping, it's got husks that are open, and you can tell it looks like it's pretty good corn. It's filled to the tip, uh, has a nice yield potential to it, but this concerns me. Um, if we look at this corn, uh, checking moisture, this corn's already at 24%, and with this open husk, it's gonna continue to dry rapidly, and I think we're gonna need to get this out fairly quickly. As you can see here, we've got some of these stock issues that are continuing to, to cause problems, so let's take a closer look at that. You'll note the amount of anthracnose that's turning these stalks black at the bottom and they are pretty easy to push push over and break off you can see that there now you will note that you know with the percentage of stalks that we have that have anthracnose um, this could be a big problem if we get some more wind uh, we keep seeing like we wanting to get uh, more and more rainy days coming through. Every time these stalks get wet, it obviously delays harvest, but it just continues to uh, allow more decay and more things to happen to these plants that are already mature and finished. Um, it's only going to continue to snowball. Realistically, there's all kinds of things that have happened to this corn crop this summer where we've got nitrogen deficiency. Uh, we've had, you can see in some of these plants, there's a fair amount of corn aphids that came in here late. They were sucking out some of the sugars that were supposed to go into those ears. That also probably could have kept that stock healthier. A lot of those things all compounded themselves this year with the weather we've had. And it's going to cause some, you know, some harvest issues. We're just sure of it. Um, I guess the biggest piece of advice I could give you is go out into your fields. Don't 60 mile an hour road scout them. Get out in the fields, get past the end rows. A lot of times we've had it where the end rows look pretty good. Driving by, you can't really see much into the field, especially in a 10, 12 foot tall corn crop. The end rows always take stress better. They don't typically yield quite as well, but they're used to getting whipped around in the wind, so they're hardier for that. But you get in the center of a field, they're not as, as protected. You know, there's a, a lot of neighbors here and they usually don't have the ability or the rind strength built up, you might say, to withstand some more of these problems we're having now. As these plants die, you can see how early we were able to squeeze those stalks and how that black anthracnose was wiping out the plant health and the stock integrity. If we get winds coming through here in October, I have a lot of fear that we're gonna have a lot of down corn. If you look at last year, we battled that already. You know, if we had a lot of a lot of time we're waiting to spray beans looking at all this volunteer corn we had a year ago in our or this year in our beans that came from a year ago with some of the harvest issues. If you look at what if you ever just Google on the internet, you know, proper harvest moisture for corn, um, all kinds of universities, you know, soybean di or uh, corn soybean digest, successful farmer, all these entities they'll always say somewhere in that 20 to 25 percent moisture. Again, this was probably 24 percent moisture today. Um, it should probably come out. You can see why. We've got too much of this stuff as we walk down the row. We're going to have uh, potential for big issues if we do get a storm go through. 
but none of those entities will ever say 16, 17% is where you should harvest corn. You'll never see that, and there's a lot of reasons for that. I get it, corn's $3 and we don't want to be buying you know, any drying cost or even more propane if we have our own dryers, but we have a lot of risk of these ears laying on the ground. These happen to lean across the rows, we can get a snoot underneath these, but the other part of this contour, the rows and, and the way that those are busted over could be the same direction. You may not get those. An ear, bunch of kernels for letting it get too dry, all those things are yield loss. And with the commodity prices the way they are, we really need all the bushels we can in the tank. And that's not even to, to take into account the problems that volunteer corn could cause for next year. So I really want to strongly recommend that when you get a chance, don't assume your corn crop is standing well. Now this is a racehorse hybrid that we have a pretty high percentage of the stocks are going away. A few, year, few rows over we have another hybrid that has really good stocks and good plant health and still 20% of those probably are something we can pinch and push over. That's alarming to me because if that hybrid's got stuff going on, we're going to have a lot of issues out in some of these fields this year. So I just caution you to, before you decide to say I'm not taking that corn out and I'm not taking it out until it's 17% and paying any drying, go look at it. If you walk out there and you're satisfied when you're going between the rows, you're not busting stocks over, that's great. You made an educated decision. But don't make a pickup seat decision because I think it could cause problems this year. So just wanted to make you aware, don't kill the messenger, but I think it is something that we need to be uh, taking a look at. So with that, that's this week's Field Friday segment, and we'll see you next week.